Sister went through a nasty breakup and slept with my fiancé. She exploded, and it slipped out. Hi, Reddit. I'm posting here in the hope that someone can give me some advice, share their experiences. I don't know. I'm just completely at a loss. I feel like my heart has been ripped out. My fiancé, let's call him Jake, and I have been together for seven years. I don't know a life without him. I met him at university, we stayed together past graduation, and moved into a flat which we bought together two years ago. He proposed last summer and we were set to wed in July 2017. We have had very few problems until now. My sister, let's call her Sarah, is an extremely volatile person. Growing up, I doted on her completely, but she had a lot of personal issues that made our home life turbulent. Her childhood was very different to mine. My parents had very little money. They were on the brink of a divorce. My dad was physically violent on a number of occasions. Whilst things improved drastically in the years after I was born, she has an abundance of problems that stem back to this. My parents feel a lot of guilt about Sarah's upbringing and used to let her get away with some shocking behavior. Sarah had the same boyfriend for as long as I can remember. They dated from when they were 16, and their relationship was toxic. They habitually broke up and got back together. When they were good, they were crazy in love. But more often than not, she would have these insane arguments, sometimes physical with him, then take out her frustrations and despair on myself and my parents. I remember spending many nights lying by her side in bed while she cried so hard she would retch. After their arguments, she would throw plates and glasses at the wall, hit herself. Sometimes she would hit me and my parents too. It was like he was a drug to her, and she was emotionally stunted and didn't know how to see anything past their relationship. Two months ago, her boyfriend called things off for good. I don't know what gave, but after nearly two decades together, he finally had enough. He booked a one-way ticket to another country, changed his number, deleted all social media profiles, and essentially disappeared from Sarah's life. To this day, she still won't explain what caused this, but it was long overdue. To say Sarah was devastated is an understatement. She moved out of their shared rented apartment and in with my parents. I would visit her most days after work, where she would flit in between explosive rage to an almost catatonic silence, staring at the wall with tears streaming down her face. At one point, we were all extremely worried she might seriously harm herself and organized for her to see a therapist, something I had suggested for years. Of course, she backed out days before her appointment, and there were no consequences. She is, after all, a grown woman. She just hasn't changed emotionally in the entire time I've known her, and still acts like a teenager. Two days ago. I went to visit Sarah, who was in bed in her darkened room. I let myself in and attempted to speak to her, telling her about my day at work. She immediately exploded, screaming at me, throwing her pillows across the room, crying uncontrollably. She told me life was unfair, that I had everything and she was left alone to rot, that everything wrong in her life was because she was a bad person. She hurt her boyfriend. She drove him away. She's ruined our family. She fucked Jake and didn't even feel guilty at the time. I initially thought I'd misheard her, but then she said it again. It was like she had poured a bucket of ice water over me. I silently left, shaking. When I got home, Jake was there watching TV. It came out of my mouth the second I saw him, and I could see in his eyes it was true. He broke down and told me it had happened three years ago. Sarah had had another blazing row with her boyfriend and decided to drive round to Jake's looking for me. I was at our parents' at the time, and Jake attempted to pacify Sarah. He comforted her while she sobbed in his arms, and one thing led to another. They had sex. I packed an overnight bag while he followed me from room to room, sobbing and telling me it was the worst mistake of his life, that he still has no idea how it happened, that he felt unbelievably guilty the second it was over, that it feels like it wasn't even real. I left him in the doorway begging me not to leave. I've checked into a hotel and have switched my phone off. I don't know what to do, who to tell, where to begin. I feel sick, like this is a bad dream. My heart feels like it's been ripped into a million pieces. For all of Sarah's faults, I love her more than anything. It's the two people who are more to me than anyone else in the world. How the fuck do I move on from this? I feel like I'm in a bubble. I don't know what's going on in the outside world. All I do is cry and sleep in this room. Someone please help me make sense of this. Podiar. My volatile sister recently went through a breakup after a 16-year relationship with the love of her life. She is severely depressed and almost catatonic. I went to visit her one day only for her to explode and tell me she slept with my fiancé three years ago. He admitted it was true and I haven't spoken to a soul since. I have locked myself in a hotel room with no plans of ever coming out. My heart is shattered into a million pieces and I don't know what to do. 
Update. Hi everyone, I logged on this afternoon to find 300 plus replies and messages to my post. I am unbelievably touched by the all people who reached out to me, particularly Fractal Faye's incredible response, which spoke to me on a level I didn't think possible from a stranger. I'd like to thank each and every single person who took the time out of their day for me. I was so overwhelmed that I've not responded to a single one as of yet, but it is truly, truly appreciated. Now on to the update. It has only been a day or so since I made my post, but it feels like I'd been in that hotel room for weeks, crying in the dark buried under the covers. At some point this morning, I decided to draw the curtains open and let the sunlight in. I went and sat on the balcony and switched my phone on for the first time. It started ringing within 30 seconds. It was my mother, who burst into tears as soon as I answered. Her and my parents had obviously been desperately worried. This is the longest I have ever gone without contact and had even contemplated calling the police had I failed to contact them by this evening. My mom informed me that as I was walking out of Sarah's room, down the stairs and out the front door, Sarah was screaming and wailing that she's sorry. Funnily enough, I didn't hear this. I don't know how. I think I was in such a state of shock that I couldn't process anything around me. Honestly, I can't even remember the drive home. After I shut the door behind me, my mom, who was the only other person at home, rushed into Sarah's room to find her trashing her room and attempting to slash her wrists with a blunt lino cutter of all instruments. Sarah used to do a lot of art. Obviously, this barely caused a scratch, but jump started my mom into action. She drove Sarah to the hospital, where I understand she underwent some sort of assessment and was kept overnight. She has incredibly agreed to undergo treatment for whatever it is that is wrong with her. My mom was surprised she was so complacent on the drive down, willingly entering the car and saying nothing other than asking where I am. Sarah seems resigned and completely deflated. My mom spoke to me at length for the first time in my life about the hardships they had undergone during Sarah's childhood. I am unwilling to go into detail and am still in shock about some of the things I heard. Sarah is not devoid of responsibility. She has long surpassed the age where she can blame her childhood for her behavior, but my mom admitted through tears that not sending her to therapy at an early age was the biggest regret of her life so far. I asked my mom if she knew why I had left. She admitted that she had known since Sarah's ex left two months ago. At this point, I had to struggle not to hang up, and I suddenly felt myself going back into that pit, but she begged me to listen. After her ex Harry, I am too drained to invent a name, hi Harry, left, Sarah told my mom exactly what had happened. It was not the reason for Harry's departure, although he did know about it. Rather, he had had enough of being Sarah's carer, and years of begging her to seek help had fallen on deaf ears one too many times. When Sarah informed my mom, my mom told Sarah I have to know immediately. Sarah refused to tell me, and I still don't know why she changed her mind in that moment. My dad doesn't know for anyone wondering, and thinks I've left as I've also finally had enough of Sarah's behavior. Now here is where the home truths came out. I asked my mom if she knew the details. She was reluctant to tell me anything, stating that it had happened and that was all I needed to know but I told her I refused to step foot in the house until I knew everything. She then proceeded to tell me that a few months before they slept together, Sarah and Jake had kissed at my dad's 60th birthday party. It was a large family gathering with a lot of alcohol involved. I remember Jake getting very drunk with my cousins. Sarah had a crying tantrum prior to arriving as her, and Harry had an argument, and he refused to come. She called me sobbing before she arrived. At some point during the night, Jake asked her if she was okay and hugged her, and once again, one thing led to another, and they shared a kiss in the kitchen. Sarah told my mom that they were both immediately remorseful and vowed never to speak of it again, but Sarah deliberately sought him out the night they slept together, knowing he was unlikely to turn her down. She openly admitted she did it to get back at Harry, who had cheated on her during one of their many infamous breaks. I don't think I even entered her thoughts. At this point, I'd heard enough. We'd spoken on the phone for over four hours, and I felt mentally drained and physically sick. Any hope I had of salvaging my relationship with Jake has completely gone. I feel the last three years have been tainted by their betrayal. And the many years before that, I wonder, did he like Sarah this whole time? Part of me doesn't even want to know. It's worth noting he has made absolutely no attempt to contact me other than a single text, stating, I'm sorry, take as long as you need. As if it's inevitable, I will come back to him. Things are still up in the air. I don't feel ready to check out of the hotel as I don't know where I'm going to go next. I feel my relationship with my mom has been rocked by these revelations. I don't know what's going to become of Sarah. I have no idea what I'm going to do about me and Jake's flat, where I'm going to live. I don't even know if I have a job anymore. I just haven't showed up to work. But I know the truth, and the smallest part of me is grateful for that.
The rest of me is consumed by a pain I never imagined possible. I guess there's nothing else to do now except wait and see how things unfold. But reading through your comments and messages have been more help than you can imagine. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And for anyone who has have ever experienced symptoms like Sarah's or has been around someone who is so visibly troubled, I beg of you, seek help before it's too late. Final update. Hi everyone. I thought I would make a final update to my original post and update as I received a lot of messages over the last few days wondering how I am over the holiday period. Once again, I'd like to thank you all for the outpouring of support I've received over the last month. The number of messages, links to help, and offers for a shoulder to cry on were overwhelming and touching. I apologize if I never got round to replying to them all. The last few weeks have been a blur, but I am eternally grateful nonetheless. So, after my conversation with my mom, where I found out she had known about Jake and Sarah, I went back to square one. I switched my phone off again and retreated back into my hotel for a further five days. From the comments on my last post, I should clear up one thing. My mom hadn't known about Jake and Sarah from the very beginning. Rather, Sarah had told her about it at the time of Harry's sudden departure, meaning she had known a couple months before I did. Eventually, I decided enough was enough and decided to call work. My boss wasn't angry or even surprised to hear from me. My mom had called him after our conversation and told him there had been a family emergency and I would be unavailable for the foreseeable future. He advised I take to the end of the week, but would have to come to a meeting if I required any more time off work than I had already given myself. So my job was safe-ish, and I'm back at work and trying to get on with things. After this, I went back to my parents. Sarah was also home, but holed up in her room. I went in to see her, and she was up painting. As a number of you guessed, it is likely she has BPD, although my parents are waiting on a second opinion. She is going to counseling weekly and seems slightly better. She broke down in tears when she saw me, and we had a long, long talk, where she spoke to me in depth about how truly consumed she was by her and Harry's toxic relationship. She understands it's for the best that it's over, but she describes the pain as unrelenting. It hurt when he was with me, and it hurts now he's gone. I know a lot of you will feel disappointed that I haven't cut her or my mom out of my life for good. I still feel resentment in the pit of my stomach when I think about it, but truly, I blame Jake more than anyone else. Jake was with me for long enough to see some of Sarah's behavior. She's not well, and he still chose to do what he did. It is a slow process, but she's my sister, and I can't cut them out of my life forever. It will never be the same again, but maybe that's a good thing. My dad, who had been newly informed on the proceedings, drove to my apartment and gathered some clothes and an overnight bag. Jake was not home, and my parents have not heard from him since I left. I have no idea where he is, and neither he nor his family have attempted any contact with me since this came out. His social media profiles have disappeared, and I have not attempted any contact with him, his family, or his friends. I began the slow process of telling my friends last week. I did not explain what happened, other than to say Jake was not the person I thought he was. They have all assumed cheating, but there is no reason for them to know who was involved. I have switched back and forth between staying with my parents and sleeping at my apartment. I sleep on the sofa bed as the memories are too painful at the moment. I am in the process of looking into selling the place, however. This means contacting Jake at some point in the near future, as the apartment is joint-owned. I will cross that bridge when I feel a bit stronger. Christmas Day was a strange and sad one for both myself and Sarah. But we spent it as a family, and for the few hours we were sat around eating and watching movies the pain was dulled even a small bit. As we were flicking through the various movies and TV episodes we'd recorded, I came across a scene that stuck with me, a scene that ended with the words, La familia es todo. I still spend most days with a hole in my heart. It hurts more than anything I've ever felt in my life, but it's getting better. I know I've got a long way to go, but for the first time, I'm confident I'll get there. Thank you for reading, and here's to 2016.